So then there comes another call corporately. And it was prophesied in Amos. And it's a repeated prophecy that is extended all the way through the book of Revelation. And it is this verse right here in Acts. See, there is a war to build you for the future. And that war is after these things, I will return. I will rebuild the tent of David, which has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will restore it. That's what this year is about. A divine recovery in this generation of the tabernacle of David. Now, I want that taken back to Rochester. I want that taken back to New York, back to Massachusetts, back to Delaware. New, well, I'm coming to New Jersey. We'll do something with it in New Jersey. And see, that got repeated again in Acts, and the whole book, of Revelation is about the future rebuilding of that in the midst of the warfare that we will encounter. You know, if you just read that book and don't try to understand it, God will bless you. That's what it says. Quit trying to understand every dynamic of it. Just read the book, read it out loud, and let the blessings of God start working with you in it. Quit trying to dispensationalize it. Or you'll get all messed up with it. And so you now are moving because God chose you and chose this area to start some rebuilding process of the tabernacle of David that's never been seen before. The beauty of this, look at the front row here, you have the four corners already surrounded. You're not building independently. You're building corporately. And that makes it a, that makes the moment that you're in a moment that you can unlock the kingdom. You're not building the church. You're unlocking the kingdom right now. And by unlocking the kingdom, the church is taking its new form for the future. If you keep focused on last season's building process called church, you're going to miss the unlocking of what is necessary to build, put together the structure for people to come into because the church is not relevant right now in America. And it's not about the church being relevant. It's about the church being authentic. It's about us being what we were meant to be in the atmosphere, in the generation, in the time we were set, and in the place we were set. And without that happening here in Scranton, American it's not going to move forward the way it should. Because God said it. I didn't say it. He didn't say someplace in Texas, which I could have driven to to start with. <laughs> and, and you have to look, like, look at it like that. There is something you have cried out for that he's ready to manifest. Now, that's why Judah has to go first in the building process. So, Jamie, you and the team, come on up and get in your place. Now, with that, we build by worshiping, speaking, warring, watching, working, and ruling. 
Build is putting some order into a stack of revelation that's been given so people can begin to see its form. And I did see one thing about Scranton. Nails came from Scranton. So without the nails, you're not going to be able to hook things and keep them together right. So Scranton has some major, major role in putting together what needs to be put together for the future. It wasn't some awful thing you've done. You have a redemptive spiritual quality that no other place carries. That you can take that quality that you see in the natural and bring it into the reality of the future spiritually. In the same process, there's Mary and the team and there's Abby working. And Pennsylvania and Ruth, Pennsylvania is being unlocked. Now, what would that mean to America? It would mean simply one word, freedom again. Because that's what this land carries. That's what the commonwealth. It would mean a unity in the body. You're called the commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That is not the same thing as the state of Texas. The commonwealth, the common good of the people coming together to demonstrate something that could not be seen elsewhere. It's amazing what God is doing. 